Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about the familial Mediterranean fever (FMF). Actually, FMF is an autosomal recessive disorder. Okay, that has a defect in MEFV gene, the Med Mediterranean fever gene. Okay, this disease is characterized by brief, acute, self-limited episodes. So, every word in this definition has a meaning. Okay. It is an acute self-limited episodes of what the episode consists of fever okay so it is a familial mediterranean fever so we easily expect fever in the definition of the acute attacks so we have acute self-limited episodes of fever and polycirrhositis that i'm going to mention in details in minutes okay these attacks recur at irregular intervals and are associated with development of amyloidosis so this definition is to tell you that familiar mediterranean fever is a autosomal recessive disease that have some genetic defect will that will lead to recurrent attacks of fever polycirrhositis and uh, these attacks are acute and self-limited and will recur at any time you cannot expect them okay and the chronic complication of the familial mediterranean fever is amyloidosis i'm going to uh, explain that in details in minutes okay so let's just forget about the definition and start with the pathophysiology of fmf what really happens in fmf that we have a mutation in uh, m EFV gene the Mediterranean fever gene and actually the MEFV gene is located on the short arm of chromosome 16 okay and the function of this gene is to encode some proteins like pyrin protein and marinos uh, marino uh, marino strain okay so what are what is the function of these proteins the pyrin and marino strain the function of these proteins is to uh, uh, to suppress some inflammatory uh, reactions in the body okay so we have what we call the cascade one enzyme this cascade one enzyme normally activate the interleukin uh, one beta and the cytokines that will lead to inflammation okay the pyrin and marino strain proteins will suppress will suppress that cascade one okay and this will lead to a uh, decrease in inflammation okay that will lead to stop uh, the inflammation that will result from the activation of cascade okay so these proteins works as anti-inflammatory proteins if we have a defect in the gene that encode encodes these proteins then this will lead to inflammation okay so it makes sense i think okay so the mutation will stop that suppression of the anti-inflammatory so that will set an inflammation in various uh, 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 our body membranes okay the mutation in mefv gene actually is happening in ethnic groups of mediterranean origin like jews like uh, turks and armenian and arabs okay so you have you can suspect that in this ethnic group jews the turks armenian and arabs you can suspect the presence of familial mediterranean fever okay so the end result of the pathophysiology of fmf is inflammatory episodes in various membranes okay so let's move now to the clinical manifestations that result from that inflammatory response typically we have acute episodes of fmf okay and that acute episodes will last for about one to four days of fever fever is a must or almost a must in familial mediterranean fever okay a plus one or more of the following 
we may have an inflammation of the peritoneal membrane and that will lead to sterile peritonitis and this sterile peritonitis will present as abdominal abdominal pain okay in 90 percent of cases of fmf in the acute attack in addition to the fever we have abdominal pain okay we may have uh, uh, an inflammation in the joint and that will lead to erythritis or arthralgia okay it may be arthritis or arthralgia arthritis means that an inflammation okay redness hotness and so on pain arthralgia is just pain and this will happen 85 percent of cases we may also have an inflammation of the pleural cavity or pleural membranes of the lung and that will lead to pleuritis in 20 percent of cases and the pleuritis will present as chest pain okay so these are the main three presentations of the fmf okay attacks for one to four days of fever plus one of the or more of the following abdominal peritoneum membrane peritonitis as abdominal pain 90 percent of cases okay joint uh, inflammation or arthralgia in 85 percent or inflammation of the a pleural membrane pleuritis chest pain in 20 percent of cases so abdominal pain is the most uh, prominent of them then the arthritis and arthralgia then the pleuritis also we have less common manifestations of the fmf okay you may have inflammation of the pericardial membrane of the heart and that will present as pericarditis we may have inflammation of the tonica vaginalis involvement okay and that will lead to acute scrotum so the child of fmf may present to you with a, a testicular or scrotal swelling and pain okay a mild splenomegaly in some cases we may have hypothyroidism okay hypothyroidism also hinoxian lie purpura some patients uh, have co-concordance of phenoxian line purpura with the fmf we have a, sp a special type of uh, skin rash the erysipelas okay like rash that happens in fmf erysipelas like rash you can see it here okay so this is the manifestation of fmf think if somebody asks you what are the manifestations of fmf think about it is a familiar mediterranean fever okay so we almost always have a fever okay and we have an inflammation of the membranes the peritoneal abdominal pain the, the lung the uh, the lung perit uh, i'm sorry plural, plural of the lung pleuritis uh, or chest pain the joints the arthritis okay if the heart the pericarditis you, we may have splenomegaly hypothyroidism scrotal uh, pain and a swelling hinoxian lipera or skin rash respella like skin rash okay now let's move to the diagnosis of a uh, familial mediterranean fever actually the diagnosis of familial mediterranean fever are based on the clinical manifestations of the disease plus the genetic study to confirm that uh, disease okay so by genetic study they can know that you have for example a mutation in mf uh, mefv gene okay plus the clinical manifestation that is diagnostic for a familial mediterranean fever okay non-specific investigations of fmf is an acute phase reactant okay you will have acute phase reactants in familial mediterranean fever like what like amyloid the amyloid will increase okay c-reactive protein will increase white pcs will increase and others any uh, acute phase reactant may increase in fmf okay so now i just want to emphasize on the amyloid when amyloid increase and that will happen 70 percent of adults and about 40 percent of children you will have what we call amyloidosis the most dangerous complication of uh, fmf and that amyloidosis will precipitate in the kidney and that may lead to kidney failure 
kidney failure in chronic cases so you have to check kidney function test uh, because it's a risk of kidney failure by a mild losses okay so this is the most common and the most important cause of death in familial mediterranean fever is the end stage uh, renal disease or the kidney failure now let's move to the management of familial mediterranean fever how to deal with this i told you that the fmf has got acute attacks okay so the first thing you have to do is the treatment of acute attack and also you have to have a mainstay treatment to prevent the complications of fmf like amyloidosis as i told you okay and you also have to give something to decrease the attacks of mf okay or to give a prophylaxis for the acute attacks okay how do we treat the acute attacks actually the only treatment of the acute attacks is the uh, anesthetics okay the are the anesthetics the anesthetics are uh, like uh, ibuprofen and uh, other things are the treatment of the acute attacks you can just give painkillers and you suspect the attack to relieve after one to four days but actually some attacks you have sometimes a prolonged and protracted episodes of fever that may last for six weeks okay so most of the times the attacks are just for one to four days sometimes we have a prolonged and protracted attacks that may long to for six weeks okay so the treatment of the acute attacks uh, are the painkillers the prophylaxis uh, for the acute attacks to reduce the acute attacks of uh, fmf we have to give what we call colchicine colchicine is a drug that we use in gout disease and we use it in fmf also okay it decreases the uh, frequency of the acute attacks of fmf uh, it has some uh, side effects like bone marrow Hyper, hypoplasia and acute myopathy bone marrow hypoplasia and acute myopathy the mainstay treatment of fms f is also colchicine okay it decreases the probability of amyloidosis and may regress even the amyloidosis not total reg regression somehow it will regress the uh, amyloidosis mildly okay about 65% of cases will respond to colchicine, 10% will not co respond. Then we give what we call biological treatment like interleukin 1 inhibitor. Okay, so this is the second line treatment after if the colchicine uh, have failed, we use the interleukin 1 inhibitor. Okay, so this is the FMF definition.